in the army firing at the innocent people. I was 33 years old when I photographed Tank Man. In the photograph, you can record the moment forever. Well, my name is Jeff Widener. Well, I was the Southeast Asia picture editor for Associated Press at the time. There was such a light feeling in the air. There was like a spring day. I remember it was beautiful. And it was incredible because you see this goddess of democracy statue that they were building, which is basically a replica of the Statue of Liberty. And it's facing off directly across the street from the great Mao portrait at the Forbidden City. I think everybody was feeling this wonderful feeling that they really hadn't experienced before, which is basically called freedom. Well, the first time I noticed that, uh, I guess you could call the tempo had changed was in the evening of June 3rd. It was quite late, I would say around 10 p.m. Well, I noticed there was something burning in the street and it was moving very uh, erratically and there were protesters chasing after it. And I reached in my pocket and I was looking inside for my other lens and I couldn't find it. And that only left me with a wide angle lens. So I literally had to get so close that I was part of the story. You know, it was really uh, very scary. And then all of a sudden somebody's pulling on my camera, pulling on my jackets and pushing me. All of a sudden the mob is turning on me and I think they're gonna kill me. They're just gonna tear me to, to ribbons. I reached in my pocket, grab an American passport, lifted it over my head and just started screaming, American, American. Some guy came over, took my passport, examined it, and then he said, uh, you photo, you photo, and he's pointing down at a dead soldier curled up on the ground. So I take one photo, and I was crawling through the legs of these uh, protesters, and I got back up, and I was hit with a rock. Everything went black, and I heard laughter. I will never forget the laughter. Pedaled back to the office. There was a sound of gunfire in the distance. As I passed by the Tiananmen Square, I noticed there were red tracers flying over from the distance. They were arching over Tiananmen Square. And I was thinking to myself, why are they shooting off fireworks? It was only after a small grain-sized speck hit me in the face and uh, realized it was large caliber machine gun fire. And I guess that kind of kicked me into high gear uh, to reality. This was an incredible event that happened that was preserved for, for history. And I was just the guy, the lucky guy who got to push the button. A lot of people ask me, what do we know about democracy? We live in a communist totalitarianism. We didn't know much, but we do know democracy through lack of democracy, lack of freedom. I was 21 years old. I was in uh, Beijing Normal University. It's very serious student movement. All the decision we took was uh, very cautiously debated. And then we thought, through our action, we can alter, we can push forward China, that we are also feeling excited that we are writing history, especially when we had the support of the Chinese people. Every time we took a mass demonstration, the people stand along the street to support us. Logic of any mass movement throughout the history is always the same. Uh, that you apply pressure and hopefully your government can uh, make a right decision. We started hunger strike knowing that this leads to our deaths. We were dying. The world know what happened later. It's a massacre. There's no other word to describe. June 4th, hundreds if not thousands of people students and civilians died uh, in, that, uh, in that day. 
I did manage to escape with the help of Chinese people and Hong Kong supporters. We were all a survivor of a massacre, trying to put our spirits together. As a like average person in China, the parents always tell you don't talk about politics. I was just one year old when Tiananmen massacre happened. I was living with my parents in a village in Zhejiang Province in South China. Beijing only existed on TV. I graduated from high school in 2005. I was admitted to the university, and there were three months between high school and the university, and there was nothing to do. So I spent a lot of time in the internet cafe. You know, the parents and teachers don't, they don't like you go to the internet cafe because they feel you know it's bad influence. But we all sneak there. Randomly, by chance, I got to know about Tiananmen. When you see this, like something that is so different from what you learn your entire life, like you, it takes a long time to actually process it. Why the students went to the street to protest? What they were asking for? Why did the government respond it in that way? Why nobody talked about it? Why I didn't hear anything until you know after I graduated from high school? I remember there was one sentence, half a sentence mentioned that event. It was like a little dispute. You don't get anything from the textbook by reading half a sentence. So there was nothing that it triggered me to look into it. But、uh, you know, when I was in internet cafe, I saw the pictures, the graphic, you know, blood. They don't want you to question. They don't want you to look into what happened. They wanted to wipe that off people's memory. There was a, a picture of a young man. Um, he was wearing a T-shirt which said, "My life is yours. My love is yours." And I think it's just extremely moving. It, you know, it really says about. Those people, those young students, they are they. The reason they protest is because they they are the love between each other and the love for the country, and I love their faces. It's so innocent and unjaded, and like this aspiration, this wanting and desire for a better society, a better, a freer and more just China. It's just beautiful. My name is Louisa Lim. I wrote a book called *The People's Republic of Amnesia: Tiananmen Revisited*. The biggest revelation was about the events that happened in Chengdu, which is、um, in Sichuan Province, and there had been a crackdown there as well. And the government had admitted it. And I simply hadn't known any of that when I had started the reporting. It was a square called Tianfu Square, which became known as Little Tiananmen, and it was also,、um, you know, there was a hunger strike there. It was occupied by students, and on the morning of June the fourth, it was cleared、uh, quite peacefully. But afterwards, when people in Chengdu found out what had happened in Beijing, they came back out onto the streets again, and this time it was in protest against the bloody crackdown in Beijing. The government sent in people's armed police. People、uh, ended up quite badly injured. There were a number of people that were killed that day, but it was the start of basically three days of running battles on the streets of Chengdu between these security forces and ordinary people who were so angered by the government's actions. A lot of people were rounded up. In front of Western eyewitnesses, they saw two army trucks being driven into the hotel, and these bodies being thrown into the trucks. And you know the way they described them, they would say like, like meat, like、uh, rubbish. I mean, it reminds us about the nature of what happened in 1989. That this was not just something that happened in Beijing. There were protests all over the country. It was a seven-week-long popular movement that really seized the whole country by storm. Students and people pushing the Communist Party to change, and I think over time in the West we tend to forget that people died elsewhere. So I just think it sort of corrects the historical record a bit.